come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the sun of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tell And the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he brings to me within my heart is And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none of as ever Jesus, there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after a rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's just something about that name jesus 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 get your bibles let's turn over to the the book of 2 Corinthians, the second book of Corinthians.
There's two books. There's a First Corinthians and a Second Corinthians. One of my favorite things that Sammy told me one time was, was, and sometimes we're not mindful of this. We're not mindful of it. That a lot of this stuff back in this time was happening for the first time. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have direction. They didn't have hundreds of years of church and people to, to dissect it and do this right or wrong. It was happening for the first time. Paul wrote a letter, 1 Corinthians, to the church at Corinth, giving them instruction on things to do and how to run the church, how things. It, 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 the first, first book of 1 Corinthians is, 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 it really is one of my favorite books in the Bible. It's a, it's a great book of instruction. But obviously they weren't doing it right. <laughs> so he wrote a second letter. I had somebody that put up on Facebook the other day, and I, and I find a lot of humor in this. What if Paul had to write our church a letter? I wonder what kind of letter we'd be getting today. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever really thought about that? What kind of letter would we get today if Paul had to write a letter about the church? Let that one kind of settle in for a minute. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The Bible tells us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, how many of you are born again today? Say amen. Amen. Amen, raise your hand. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, that sentence stops right there, and it, it, it could say abundance of things in saying that. But it goes on and says this. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things or become new. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father this morning to God, Lord, we're so grateful, we're so thankful for all the many wonderful things that you've done for us. God, I'm thankful to be in your house once again. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to preach your word once again. And God, this morning I pray that you open up our hearts, souls, and minds to give us an understanding Lord, I'm thankful for Miss Presley to Jesus, dear God, Lord, that Lord, that she took the steps to ask you to come into her heart. God, I'm thankful for the moms and the dads that are still teaching kids how important Jesus Christ can be. Lord, I pray that this church would be a great influence on families. And Lord, that it would be, continue to be a light in this community. Be with us in this time, for it's in your sweet and holy name we pray, Lord. Amen. And amen. amen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, what that does not say is this. It does not say, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is working on becoming a new creature. It says something happened. I have a friend of mine who is a missionary in Uganda today. I grew up with him. Me and Steve know him well. His name is Tommy Harris. Now Tommy would be ashamed for me to tell y'all what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to tell you all a little bit about my friend Tommy. Tommy was an alcoholic. There is no other way to say it than he was an alcoholic. Tommy smoked. <laughs> Tommy chewed tobacco. And I'm not getting on anybody in the room that smokes. I'm not getting on anybody in the room that chews tobacco. I'm not getting on anybody in the room that you think that, that drinks. Y'all just hear me out. He did all those things. I apologize for what I'm about to say. He hated black people. Okay? He was a racist. Is that a true statement? You knew him. I knew him. My dad always told me something when I was growing up. Dad always said to me, he said, Joey, 
people don't change. That's a harsh comment, isn't it? But Dad would follow it up with this. He would say, only Jesus can change people. Y'all hear me now, now, okay? Only Jesus can change people. I remember Tommy Harris getting saved. You remember that? You remember when he came and told us he got saved? I'm going to tell y'all something about Tommy. I know for a fact he was a new creature. A brand new creature. Now let me tell you what happened to Tommy when he got saved. Tommy didn't say, how can I stop drinking? He quit drinking. He did, didn't he, Steve? He didn't say, God, I want to help take smoking away from me. Tommy stopped smoking. He chewed tobacco all the time. He didn't say, he didn't come in there with me one day and said, Brother Joey, would you help me pray that God would take the urge of chewing tobacco away from me? He quit chewing tobacco. Joe, you say people can't do that. I agree with you. People can't. But God can. You see what I'm saying? People can't. I remember one time, one of my favorite stories of Tommy, he said there was an old preacher that after he got saved, Brother Lawrence had talked to him about tithing. He, he, had, he said, Joey, I never gave a dime to the church in my life. I never, I never gave a dime. I didn't know anything about tithing. He said, and, and when he started talking about me giving a percentage of my income to God, I thought there's no way. And I'll never forget when he came in my office one night laughing. He said, Joey, I was trying to figure out how to tithe. I don't, I don't meet Christians anymore that are trying to figure out how to tithe. <laughs> They're okay with just not doing anything. He said, I was trying to figure out how to tithe and do the right thing. You know what he said to me, Matthew? He said, but I found out when I gave up drinking, when I gave up smoking, when I gave up chewing tobacco, I had more money than I ever had in my life. <laughs> tithe wasn't an issue anymore. God got those things out of his life. I'm going to tell you all something. The church needs some new creatures in it. Y'all hear me out. Now I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people in religion. And Sammy, I don't agree with it. They like to work on getting better. They do. They got things in their life and they say, Joey, I want to get them out of my life and I want to go down a path in my life and I want to, I want to, I'm going to tell you something. It'll never work. It won't. It will never, ever work. You will never get those things out of your life. Because you can't. Let me tell you why. Because we're human beings. We're human beings and we are a sinful nature. There's you know, I'm going to tell you something. You look at the best person in this room. You don't care who they are, you think they are. I don't care who you who you would like to. You look at the person in this room that you probably set up on the highest pedestal. And if they're a Christian in the day, before they met God, they had a sin nature that was just like Tommy's. I'm looking at you, Sister Marcy. I love you. You're my friend, so I can talk about you. And you won't get mad at me. See, Sammy gets mad at me sometimes. Y'all, he got his feelings hurt yesterday and left. He didn't get his feelings hurt. But I love Miss Marchie. But I'm going to tell y'all something about Miss Marchie. Before she met Jesus, she was a sinner. She was. Now, now we know the, the Bible school, Miss Marchie. And we know the Sunday school, Miss Marchie. And we know the, the, the Miss Marchie that brings food on Sunday afternoon and cooks. All of us know that, Miss Marchie, but there was a day that Marchie existed before she knew God. 
You know who that was? A sinner. But you see, somewhere along the way, she asked Jesus into her life, and she became a new creature. She did, Sammy. I'm talking about God changed something. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth because there are a lot of people that are, that are coming into the church in that day. And I won't say like Sammy said, it's happening for the first time. People are like, how do I believe? What does it mean to believe? What does it mean to have faith in God? What am I doing? And it's just if I come to church on Sunday, if I give money, you know, am I doing the right thing? If I get baptized, am I going down the right path? Where am I? And Paul said, wait a minute. I need you all to know something. I need you to pay attention to something. If Jesus Christ lives in you, Lawrence, if he's there, if he's inside, you are new. Something's happened. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Something miraculous has happened. I, I, I still to this day, I think salvation is the greatest miracle on the face of this earth. I have seen some people change like I've never seen in my life. I've seen people, like I said, that were racist, people that hate people, all of a sudden full of joy. Listen to me. Y'all don't mishear me on this today. Y'all don't mishear me on this today. Don't mishear me. I believe, born again Christians, I believe we should be full of joy. We're empty. We're empty of joy. Y'all should be where I'm at right now. A third of you look like you're about half asleep. There's another third that looks like they don't even want to be here. Like somebody drugged me into this room. And Joey's up there telling us about we're supposed to be a new creature. What's happened to the excitement? What happened to the newness? Did it go away? Is it there just for a season and then it's gone? It's not. Something changed in our life. Something changed that made us something different. Jesus got in there. Now Paul told the church at Corinth, listen y'all, it don't matter how many times you come into the building, it don't matter how much what you're practicing, how many times you're reading, Something has to change. It does, Sammy. I've seen a lot of people that have come into the church and are mean and hateful. Y'all hear me? Listen to me, Deke. And they spend years in the church and they're still mean and hateful. Something ain't right. Joey, you judging people. You doggone right I am. Do you think Christians can drug people? Do y'all think, Joey, you read your Bible. The Bible tells us that Jesus tells us not to judge. He says for whatever judgment we judge others, we will also be judged. Well, I'm going to tell you something else that Jesus said. Jesus said you can be fruit pickers. Did y'all know that? Do you know that we can be fruit pickers? We can. Jesus said, Sammy that you will know a tree by its fruit. Y'all hear me out. Joey, I'm a new creature. I've had, had something absolutely wonderful happen in my life. Jesus has changed my life. Jesus has made me new. Now, I don't want to tell nobody about him. I don't want to change my life in the way that I live. I don't want anything in my life to be different. I just want to, really, really what we want I wish I had an offering plate. We really want to just pay fire insurance. We really want to do everything we can so we don't have to go to hell one day. That's the ultimate goal. Now, I don't want any, I want to still be able to drink my beer when I want to. I want to still be able to smoke my cigarettes. I still want to be able to cuss. I still want to be able to be mean. Listen, and I'm going to tell you, some of y'all, this is your love. Hey, Joey, Brother Joey, I still want to be angry. I still want to be mean to other people. I want to be those things. Well, listen to this. You can't be those things if Christ is in you. That's truth. I didn't say this. That's what the Bible says. You can't be those things. You've got to change. Well, I want to change. I want to stay like I am. Paul says we're a new creature. 
I'll tell you something about Christians too. When somebody does change, sometimes we don't like it. <laughs> you ever notice that? We want people to be saved, Lawrence. But sometimes we don't like it when they are saved. Joey, am I crazy? I ain't. There's people that when they come into church, Timmy, sometimes they change and we ask them to get to God and we try to get them down a the path to God and we try to get on the right to path to God. And all we want to do, all we want to do is talk about what they used to be. What you used to be, doll. I sure am glad people don't come into this room all the time talking about what I used to be. But there are some people that will tell me, and I'm going to tell you something, y'all. Preachers get to hear it. I know a lot more about y'all jokers than y'all know. Because you know why? Because you got family members. And they tell me what y'all used to be. Guy. I hear you. People like to talk about what we used to be, Wanda. And they don't like to accept that we can change. There's a lot of things in the Bible I have a tough time with, and I'm not going to lose my focus and get down those paths, but sometimes it's almost like the church won't let people change, won't let them become something new. I got a piece of information for you, Brother Don. I'm, I'm here for this. everybody that's in this room this morning. Do you know that everybody in this room that is a born-again believer, I'm going to abstract that off to the side because I don't think everybody in this room is, everybody that is a born-again believer at some point in their life was a wretched sinner. <laughs> Listen to me. Some of you are sitting in this room saying, Joey, I was a little kid when I came to know Jesus Christ. I was eight years old. I've had kids. Trust me, they are wretched sinners. Except for when they're grandkids. Sorry about that. I apologize, Mary. <laughs> grandkids or not. <laughs> Kids, yes. <laughs> grandkids, no. <laughs> but I don't care how old you were when you came to know Jesus. Before you knew Jesus Christ as your Savior, before you asked Christ, you were a wretched sinner that, believe it or not, was bound, listen, believe it or not, like it or not, listen, if you didn't accept him, he's going to burn one day. We don't want to burn, but that's what was going to happen. And that applied to everybody. But thank God when you asked Jesus Christ into your heart, something happened. Let me tell you all what happened. These verses in the Bible tell us some things that happened. The Bible tells us down here in these verses, it says, it says in, in, in verse 18, and all things of God who he hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Now reconciled is a, an accounting term. How many, do we got any accountants in the room, people who mess in accounting? Donna, thank God for Donna and Connie. Thank them for, for doing a good job with their books and keeping up with things. It's an accounting term. I had to look up, I'm not an accountant, I'm an engineer. Why does Paul write words in here about accountants? So I looked up what the word reconciled meant. Restoration of friendly relations is one definition of it. I like that. Restoration. So one definition of being reconciled means we have been restored. Restored to what, Sammy? We've been restored to something if there was some restoration going on. One definition of reconciliation says an action of making one view or belief compatible now listen to this this is fun how many times in my life have I heard somebody say preacher Joey let me tell you what I believe I've heard it let me tell you what, how I think we ought to go to church Listen to this. Let me tell you how I think I ought to pray. Let me tell you how I think I ought to read. And listen to this. I'm going to say this to everybody that's got that in your brain. Listen to what I got to say about that. I don't care. Because it has no meaning. The only thing that matters is what that book said. His word. Y'all get this? I don't care what your belief system is. 
I don't care what your belief system is on attendance. I don't care what your belief system is on, on reading. I don't care what your belief system is on praying. I don't care what your belief system is on how you treat us. Joey, I don't believe in doing that. Because, see, the Bible says when he comes in, he makes us a new creature, he's reconciled us. Now, here's the cool thing, Sonny. And what I mean by that is cool. God isn't trying to get compatible, compatible with my views. That's not what's going on. That's not. God isn't looking at all these 200 people, 175. It's preacher's numbers. There's 300 people in here. <laughs> God isn't looking at all these people, and God isn't trying to make himself compatible with everybody's views in the room. That's not what happened in reconciliation. We reconciled our views to his. So the next time you're with a friend or you have a thought that's contradictory to what God's word is, I don't care. Better than that, Lee, he don't either. We weren't reconciled to our views. He wasn't reconciled to my views. I was reconciled to his. Which means, I'm going to go back to the first statement, I have to change. I got to change. Amen. I'm going to tell y'all something. Please hear me out. For all that it's worth. I believe Christian people should be some of the sweetest. You hear me? Come on, Jim. Humblest. Forgiving. Joey, I ain't going to forgive them. Forgiving. Forgiving. Yes, the people along the way you didn't want to forgive. Yeah, I have. I have. Deke, you ever had some people you won't forgive? You don't want to forgive? You ever got some people you mad at? Joey, you don't know what they did. Forgiving? You gotta forgive them. Jesus even he even crossed that bridge one time and said, He said, You know what? If you won't forgive the people that you can see of their sin, how are you gonna ask the Father who you can't see to forgive you of yours? Hear me out, brothers and sisters. Joey! I love the angry Christians. You know what I tell you about the angry Christians? They need to get God in them. They need to change before it's too late. Y'all better hear me on this one. You got anger, you got mischief, you got strife, you got, listen to me, you got, I'm going to do it my way. I want to tell you the truth. It hits people right between the eyes. He don't live in here. Because I want to ask you a question. How can that Jesus that I know change my buddy Tommy and not change you? Because I know the answer to that. Because Tommy got him and these other people didn't. That's just the truth. The Bible says that when Jesus changes us, he reconciles us. I have one more definition of it because I liked it too. It said, <laughs> I love this too, Sammy. This is getting to the Donna, it's getting to the financial piece of it. It said the action of making financial accounts consistent. God in heaven, <laughs> as my witness. Y'all hear me on this one? Can y'all hear me? Give me an amen if you're still awake. Amen. Give me a big amen if you're still amen. awake. Amen. Give me a praise the Lord if you're ready to go home. I was, tricking you, I was tricking you, Sage. Just seeing if you're paying attention. I knew you were seeing who's paying attention. Oh, Brother Toby's heading out the door. Like, oh. God help us. Reconciliation we would be consistent. I'm going to tell you what some of your Christian lives need today. Consistency. I teach my sons, my daughter, be consistent in your marriage. 
I'm going to tell you something about JoJo when he was married. I didn't go out to the bar at night. Did I go to the bars at night, Leah? You shook your head. Oh. <laughs> you heard that a different way. Your head turned, and I was like, wait a minute, did I say something wrong? I don't remember going to the bars. I'm still married, thankful, it sounds like. It's a good thing. Hey, Lynn's still paying attention. That's a good thing. 30-something years of this, and she's still paying attention. I didn't go out to the bars at night. I came home. First of all, I came home because I love my family. I, I, I'm, I'm different, y'all. I, 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 I love being with my kids. I love, I, I love raising my kids. I love being part of their life. I did. I don't have any regrets looking back. Played baseball, did all those things with them. Coached them. I loved it. But I can tell you about something about their dad that they can say. They can, they can say that Joey wasn't the greatest dad. He didn't make the most money. He can go all these things. But I can tell you I know my wife. And I know my kids can say one thing about me. I was consistent. I get up and went to work every day. I took care of my family. I don't call in sick. I don't play. Listen, y'all. I brought my family. Listen, men are, men, are you listening to me? Men. I'm not talking to the women right now. I'm talking to men. I brought my family to church. I didn't follow my wife to church. I was a man in my house. Let me rephrase that, Timmy. I was the man in my house, and it was my responsibility to raise my family in the house of God. I was consistent in what I did. I prayed for the consistency in Christianity today. We need some consistency. Listen, when people look at us today, I'm not talking about how they look at the world. Listen, when people look at our Christian walk and our Christian lives, they say, I don't want to believe in that Jesus. I don't want to follow that Jesus. You know what? I don't blame them. Because we're not consistent about what we walk and how we believe and how we talk and what we do. There's a not a lot of inconsistencies in what we do. I'm going to tell you today, I'm going to tell you, if Christ lives in you and you are reconciled, Brother Sammy, you need to be consistent in what you're doing. Y'all hear me out on that. Man, the church could use some consistency. Y'all hear my joke a minute ago? How many people did I say, what was the preacher's number today? 300. How many people? 200, 175. Y'all know how many members are in this church? Does anybody know? Guys, said 600 marching. What do you think it is? I think y'all last time was 550. 550. So, so 550 people. Now, a lot of you are going to get on to me and say, Brother Joey, there's some people that are living in homes. Brother Joey, there's some people that can't come to church. And listen, I'm okay with that. But there's doggone near 300 people that are pretty, being pretty inconsistent as best I can tell. Y'all give me an amen on that? Am I right or wrong? There's 300 people that are claiming, listen to me, that are claiming that they're going to support Concord Missionary Baptist Church, that are claiming that Jesus Christ has changed their life. They are claiming that they are a new creature and they have no consistency about them. Tell me I'm wrong. Because I'm not. They have no consistency about them. God's reconciled us. He's done something with us. Then we should be consistent about what we do. Then Paul says the last thing, and I know, I do know what time it is. He says, you're a new creature. You've been reconciled. All those things are praising heaven and glory about. I'm going to tell you all something. I don't, I don't like to, we did something in Sunday school. I'd love to, I'm going to maybe preach that one. I'm going to leave that for another day. But he says when he's changed us and he's reconciled us, something happens to us. Now, now here's the neat thing, Debbie. It didn't happen to the preachers and it didn't happen to the deacons. It didn't happen to the Sunday school teachers. It didn't just happen to new believers. It happened to everybody. You know, something happened. You know what it said, the Bible says, what Paul said? He said we became something. We became ambassadors. 
We became ambassadors. Is Annalise in here? Annalise, I love you. Annalise, I love her. I, lo I do love her. Annalise is my best definition of an ambassador. What is an ambassador? She goes down to that little school that she's at, and she's always telling people they need to come to our church. He's always telling other kids that, you know what, we got something good going on at Concord. How many of y'all this morning, have listen to me, how many of y'all this past week, I'm not going to look at the last three months, I'm going to look at the last week of your life that you've told somebody they need to come down to this church because it's great. A lot of you are going to sit there and say, Joey, I don't care too much for the preacher. I'm okay with that. And that guy that teaches on Sunday night, uh, I'm okay with that. And Joey, I don't think a whole lot of the deacon. Okay. And I'm going to tell you the choir could be better. Eh, maybe. I'm going to tell you what, there could be more people there. I'm just a little, listen to but I'm going to tell you something. Take every bit of that, throw it in the garbage and remember something. We're not here for any of those people. We're here to worship and uplift the Almighty God. That's why we're here. We're ambassadors. We got a story to tell. How many of you got a story to tell? I got a story to tell. I got a lot of stories to tell. Some of you just prayed I don't tell your story. <laughs> I hope he don't tell my story. I got a lot of stories to tell. But listen to me, y'all. I love, I love my kids. And I love talking about my, my kids. They're in the back burner now because Mallory's here, so I, I tell stories about Mallory all the time. Max dropped Mallory in Lynn's lap for two minutes. I was getting ready to go. And uh, she smiled. Lynn made her laugh. Half the time she's got that look right there, something right there. She, I don't understand where she gets that look. I guess she gets that from Allison or Max. I don't know. <laughs> Allison, go get me now. She laughed. I'm just playing. She knows better. She laughed. And it made my heart melt. Almost made me cry. It, listen, it changed me. And I, I, when I got to Sunday school, I want to tell people about. I want to tell people about what Mallory making me laugh this morning, making me smile. I'm an ambassador for Mallory. That's my that's my little grandkid. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Deke, Debbie. Every time Deke gets around me, Joe, check out this other picture I got. I said, look at this picture I got, Deke. <laughs> <laughs> check out it's what we do. But I'm gonna tell y'all something something better. I love my grandkids. I love my kids. I got Jesus. And Paul said when he changed something about me, I don't know if you know the whole details. I wish, listen to me, I wish for about 10 seconds they could crack open, Jerry, I do, I wish they could crack open hell for 10 seconds and let us all just look over. We would run out of this room screaming trying to get to people that we know so that they don't go there. You see what I'm saying? Uh, we'd be more than an ambassador. We'd be a messenger. Because you know why? Because we know. You remember how you listen? You remember that story in the Bible? The, the, the rich man and Lazarus, rich man was down there. You know what he said? Hey, what did he say? Go tell my family. They don't want to come here. Well, here's something. I got you even better than this. You ready for this? What if they could crack open heaven, TKO? What if we could just get a glimpse? Y'all hear me out on this one, Jackie. What if we could just get a glimpse of what that really is? Paul, I mean, excuse me, John tried to write it in Revelations to an extent, tried to give us a vision of it. People have tried to paint pictures of it. But Toby, what if we could see what heaven really was? Now, here's a kicker. Here's a kicker, Lee. I want to go there. Listen to me. I want to go to heaven. I do, y'all. I want to see my Jesus. Y'all hear me out. I want to meet those disciples. I want to meet these men and women of God that have throughout time. I do. I want to talk to a lot of them. I want to be there. Man, I want to see the milk and the honey flowing. I want to see the streets of gold. Hey, listen, like they said that few other day, I'm excited about the mansion that whatever, hey, if it's a hut, whatever it is, I don't know. 
Whatever, hey, listen, whatever Jesus has got for me, I'm ready. I'll take it. I'll take it. Sign me up, Lord. I'll take it. But if I could get a glimpse, Matthew, of that. Here's the deal. I want y'all to go with me. I want to tell you about this place that Jesus has prepared for me. Listen. Just like Miranda and Jake talking to their little girl. Or just like we're talking to our kids. But just like we're talking to them. You know why we're talking to them about heaven? You know why we're talking to them about God? Listen to all, listen to me. Hear me out. It ain't because I'm trying to keep them out of hell. I'm just trying to make sure they get to heaven with me. Y'all hear me? I want to see my sons. I want to see my daughters. I want to see my daughter-in-laws and my son-in-law. I want to see my grandkids. I want to see my aunts and my uncles. I want them to share that with me. Paul said, let's go be an ambassador and take them with us. That's what he said. Let's go take them with us. You know what is the cool part? Dake, it is a cool part. I was told all my life, while earning money and building houses, buying cars, people told me a hundred times, and I know a lot of y'all have heard this, they said, Joey, you can't take it to heaven with you. And some people would tell me, Dole, that you can't take nothing to heaven with you. But that's just not true. Joey, all you work for, you can't take your house and you can't take your car. Daniel, you can't do it. You can't take that to heaven. But I'm going to tell you what you can do. I'm going to tell you what you can do. You can take your kids. You can take your wife. You can take your friends. You can take your grandkids. You can take all those people with you. This is this. And the Bible's not teaching us anything that stops us from doing that. They can all go. Y'all know that? Every one of us. Y'all, hey, listen, that's a hallelujah moment. Listen, there's not, Jesus said he hoped that none, that none should perish. Guess what? You know who the ambassadors are? That's us. We're the ambassadors. I, I, I've often said this, and I'll close with this. I had a friend of mine, I tell this story, I've told it a couple times in my life. He came into my office. He said, Joey, I don't believe in going to church. <laughs> I was like, Joker hadn't really been reconciled, but I listened to him. I don't believe in going to church. I don't, March yes, we said, I don't believe. I, he said, I believe I can be just as close to God out on a tractor. You ever heard those people? I can be just as close to God out on, in a deer stand. I can be just as close to God. On, I, I, I hear you. And so he told me that story. He's like, Joe, I can be just as close. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. Along the way, he said, my wife and my daughter, he was proud. My wife and my daughter, you know him too. He was proud. My wife and my daughter, they still go to my church. But he, you know what he said, Sammy? He said, my son's just like me. I said, is he? He said, yep. He don't go to church. He's proud. He gets out there and works. So I asked that guy, I said, do you really believe, oh, Joey, I'm saved. I know I know Jesus. I know I know God. I, he, he said, and you would be wrong as a minister. My, he did. He told me, he said, you'd be wrong. Tell me. I, I listen, I'm like, dude, I ain't judging you. you know, only you know. And I asked him, Lawrence, I said, but what about your son? That you have obviously made hate the church. Told him that it wasn't necessary. I asked him a pretty serious question. Because I believe, this, uh, this ain't in the book. Everybody listen to me. Last thing I'm saying, this is not in the Bible. And I know it's not in the Bible. I do believe on judgment day. When God, Jimmy, when God's judging all the sinners. I believe this. I believe that there's going to come a time that people who are not saved, God's judging them, and there's, that's that doom moment and everybody hates it. I don't know how, Sammy, but I believe, Matthew, I do. Matthew's heard me talk about this. I believe that the Bible tells us that the saints will judge the sinners. That is, that is biblical. That is happening. So we will be there that day. Poppy, we will. We'll be there that day. 
And we won't be there with people that we worked with. And some of us that were our husbands or our wives. Some of us that were very close friends. And listen to this, y'all. I hate to tell y'all this. Some of you, it was your children. Some of us, it was your children. I can't tell you how, because I don't know. But I believe when God is judging that soul, that they're going to see you, Matthew. And they're going to say, you knew. You knew. Steve, you knew. Sammy, you knew this. You accepted Jesus. You claimed Him as your Savior. You knew the outcome. And you did nothing. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have got to be quit being okay with it. Joey, I'm good. I'm happy for you. There are a lot of people outside that door that are not. The Bible tells us we're a new creature and we're reconciled. And when we're reconciled, we're an ambassador. I challenge you to be the ambassador that Jesus has called you to be. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, we're so thankful. I want to take this time and thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. My name is Joey Dibman. I'm with Concord Missionary Baptist Church. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ and have never asked him to come into your heart, I'd like to take a few moments to help you do just that. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, this is open to every one of us that requests because Romans 10, 13 goes on to say, even deeper, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you would like to pray with me, let's bow our heads in prayer to our Lord and Savior and ask Him if you're seeking Him to come into your heart today. Lord, I just want to take the opportunity that if there's someone out there today, and dear God, Lord, they're seeking you, dear God, Lord, and maybe they're at a place in their life where they can't see. But today, through the Holy Spirit, which has pricked their heart, through your word, not the words that I preach, but through the holy word of an awesome Father. God, I pray today, dear God, Lord, that they would be enlightened. And God, I, I'd ask them today to pray with me and say, Lord, I want to be a believer. Dear God, Lord, I want to believe in the fact that I know that you walked on this earth. Lord, I want to know that you died for my sins. God, I want to believe in the fact that on the third day you resurrected from a tomb and you sit on the right hand of God. And today, Lord, I want to ask you to come into my heart. Lord, if there's one out there praying with us today, dear God, Lord, that's seeking you, Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer with me today, dear God, Lord, and invite Jesus Christ into their heart to forgive their sins. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon us. God, we thank you for what you're doing for us. I just pray that you'd be with us through this moment in time. And dear God, Lord, and show us the things that you'd have us to see. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. You know, if you've done that today, if you've taken the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, you know, he died on a cross close to 2,000 years ago and he walked on the earth. The Bible teaches us that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in their heart that he has risen from the grave shall be saved. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, you know, I want to invite you to, you know what, into your new relationship with your Father. And I want to, to maybe help you, maybe through watching the videos as you learn and you grow, but maybe try to find a, a church that's close to you a church home where you can go with other believers and walk with them and learn to grow with them. I invite you today also that maybe if today you've asked Christ to come into your heart, that, that you know what, maybe you would let us know. And drop us a postcard to say, you know, hey, I listen to these videos on YouTube. I appreciate what you've done. But I would like for y'all to know that on this date, on so-and-so, that I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. We'd invite you, and, and if you look at the address that's on the screen today, and, and maybe send a postcard, and then you know what, if you don't want to write it down, maybe through email. There will be an email address that you can address to our church at Concord Missionary Baptist Church. 
You could just email us and let us know what's going on in your life. But even better than that out there today, maybe you are a, a Christian today and maybe you're not here in Temple, Georgia with us, but you're in your walk with Jesus today and you're, you're having some valleys that you're having to go through. And, and maybe you need some, to seek some prayer requests and some other shoulders to lean on. I invite you to also to email us or drop us a card. We meet on Wednesday nights to pray. We take these things before the Father. We take these things very seriously. and We come together as a group as we pray to our Father. So I'd invite you to, to send those prayer requests to us, and I promise you that we'll take them and put them on the altar and bring them before the Lord. Once again, I want to thank so much for you taking your time to come spend with us and worship with us, you know, through song, through word, but more, more than anything else, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you and your family.